Good morning, folks. It is a pleasure to be here with you today to share with you during this this time of crisis that we are in as a as a nation and the world. I'm here to just say that God is in control. He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're at. Psalmist David said, "I'm confident of this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living." God has got this. He's got you. And I want to talk to you this morning just about a couple of things and. Three things, really, that, that we need to keep in mind that will help us to live victorious in this time of, of crisis. The first thing is, I think we need to establish a pattern of prayer in our lives. Prayer has always been the secret of victorious living in our lives. The early church, the early believers understood that, that out of prayer flowed all the, the details of their lives. The early church was a church of prayer. In fact, as you read the book of Acts, you see that, that uh, they were either in a prayer meeting, they were either going to a prayer meeting, or had just come out of a prayer meeting. Prayer was the vital link of their lives. They spent their times in prayer. In fact, in Acts chapter 4, we see the, the story of Peter and John, who, who had been arrested earlier in chapter 3, and it had been threatened never to preach again in the name of Jesus. And they went back, it said, to their church as they gathered together, and it says that the church began to pray. It was always the resource. Uh, anytime anything came up in their lives, they, the resource that they always turned to was to communion with the Father, to go to the Lord in prayer. And in Acts chapter 4, it tells us this beautiful prayer of, of the early church. The believer's prayer, it's labeled. And there was three things in that that I want to point out to you very quickly this morning. That, made, that gave them a boldness to pray uh, without fear, without intimidation, even in the, the face of threats against them that they prayed. And the first thing was they started off the prayer and they prayed, Sovereign Lord. The very first confidence that they had in God was that He is sovereign, that He is in control, that, he, that He's in control of all things, that He made the heavens, He made the earth, that He is the sovereign Lord, that He is in control. What a good thing for us to remember during this season that we're in right now, that God is in control, that He is sovereign, that He works all things together for our good because He loves us, that God is sovereign over your lives. He knows what's going on in your heart, in your life, in your home, in your family. He knows what's going on in this world. He is the sovereign God. He is in control. Mankind does not have the final say in this. Doctors don't have the final say. The government doesn't have the final say. We serve a God who is the all-powerful one, who is the almighty one, who is the sovereign Lord, and he is in control of, of our lives. Secondly, they had confidence because they understood of the wisdom of God. They said, God, that, that these leaders that have threatened us or have, have done all that, that was in your power and in your wisdom, that you had just decided beforehand what should happen. They understood that he's all wise. Our God is all wise. He knows the end from the, from the beginning. God is in control. He knows what is best for your life. The Bible assures us that we serve a God who is a good God. He's all wise and he will only be good to us. He knows what is best for our lives and we can trust him. We can put our confidence in him. We can, we can say, God, I will trust in you no matter what comes my way, no matter what the circumstances are around me. I can trust in you, Lord, because you are all wise. You know what is best for my life and you are a God that can be trusted. Thirdly, they, they prayed and had confidence because God was all-powerful. You know, it's one thing to have a God who's, who's wise but hasn't the power to accomplish anything. It's another God, who, another thing to have serve a God who is all-powerful but is not wise, is not loving, is not caring. But we serve a God that not only is He all-wise, but He is all-powerful. He can fulfill His purposes for our lives. You can trust Him today. No matter what the circumstances that you are facing, no matter what it, whether it be the sickness, whether it be this virus that's going around, whatever has come your way, you can trust and know that the all-powerful one is in control of your lives. He can be, he can be trusted. There are three things I want to point out that we need to remember as we face this crisis and how to be victorious in the middle. The first one is to establish a pattern of prayer. 
That's what they did in the early church. Uh, establish a pattern of prayer. That Let prayer be the, the resource that you turn to in every situation and in every circumstance. But prayer isn't just simply saying, God, I need help in this. Uh, but prayer is communion with him. To know that he is our loving Heavenly Father. He longs to be in fellowship with us. In fact, that's why he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus not just to, to take away our sin, but he... He sent Jesus not only to do that, but he sent Jesus to bring us back into relationship with him. That's what your father desires to do. Even during this season that we're in right now, he desires to bring you back into fellowship with him, the back, back near to him. And so to live victorious in this time, let prayer be a pattern of your life. Spend time seeking the Lord. Spend time praying. Spending time in fellowship with him. Start off your day seeking God. So God, that you're in control of this day, God. You're in control of my life. I can, I can depend upon you. I can trust you no matter what the circumstances might be in my, my life and whatever I face. And so establish a pattern of prayer in your life. Secondly, have a lifestyle of praise and worship. To worship him and to praise him. To, to remember what the Lord has done. In, in Psalm 103, we went, read this wonderful passage of scripture. The psalmist David says, Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Remember the goodness of the Lord. Remember what he has done in your life. He says, forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all of our sins. Thank God that we can confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins. The Bible tells us that he for forgives and he forgets them. He puts them in the sea of his forgetfulness. It says he forgives all of our sin and he heals all of our diseases. We serve a God who is a healing God, who is a loving God. It says he redeems our life from the pit and he crowns us with love and compassion. He satisfies our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. We remember the faithfulness of God. You know, what we focus on will become larger and larger until it consumes us. You know, it's one thing to sit in the house throughout the days and and, and watch the news and the reports. And, and, and there's very little good news that's, that's being presented. And, and so we hear this over and over again. And if we focus on it, it becomes larger and larger until we consume ourselves. But if we, like the psalmist says, I'm going to focus upon you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to focus my heart upon you so that you become larger than my situations and my circumstances. I focus upon you, Lord. I remember the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Bible tells us that the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We remember what Jesus has done in our lives. And we, that, word, that word testimony, the rabbis saw that word testimony as not simply recounting something that happened in the past. But that word testimony means uh, uh, to do it again. To accomplish what you've done, uh, God, in the past and, and that you'll do it again. Every miracle that God has done, every answer to prayer that God has done is his promise and his, pro and his prophecy that he will do it again in your life. You can trust him. You can remember the goodness of the Lord and understand that that goodness that he has done in the past, he will do it again. He will come to your aid. He will come to minister to you. He is a faithful God. All his blessings and all has been as a time that he has come to your aid. Is, a, is God testifying to you that I will do it again for you? You can trust him. And so let your life be saturated with praise and, and worship. Spend your day singing worship and praise to him, of giving glory to him. Don't allow the enemy to fill your heart with doubt and to fear and discouragement, but understand that God is bigger than this epidemic. God is bigger than our circumstances. He's bigger than our loss of jobs and employment. He's bigger than all the circumstances that we come. He is a God that loves us and is concerned about us. He cares for you today. Remember the goodness of the Lord. And saturate your life so that it becomes a life that's, that's filled with praise and worship throughout the day. Sing to the Lord and, and bless the Lord and magnify Him. Oh, bless the Lord. And forget not all of His benefits. 
God will bring you through. God will, will, will bless those who trust in him. The Bible talks about the name of the Lord being a strong tower. The righteous runneth in and are safe. So, so not only do you want a pattern of prayer in your life, not only do you want to have a lifestyle of praise and worship, but you want your heart and mind to be saturated with the Word of God. So spend time in the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to fill your heart. The Apostle Paul says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Or faith comes through hearing the Word of God. And so, so read the Word of God. Let God speak to you through His Word. Let God speak to you through His Scriptures. This is his love letter to us, this word of God. And allow him to speak to you. Allow him to, to make his word alive in your life. The Psalmist David says in Psalm 119, My comfort in my suffering is this. Your word, your promises preserve my life. There's power and there's transformation in the word of God. Hebrews tells us that the word of God is sharp and powerful in fact let me read that to you hebrews chapter 4 it's a wonderful passage of scripture that we need to keep our hearts on the writer of hebrews says for the word of god is alive and active it's sharper than any two-edged sword it penetrates even to dividing of spirit joints and marrow it judges the thoughts and intents of the heart well, well, there's so much going on today that, that tries to attack your thoughts and your mind and your heart. God says, my word, my word will, will establish your, your thoughts and your, and your mind and judge them. And so that you will understand that I'm with you this morning. Understand that these principles are God's word to us. We want to be a people who establish a pattern of prayer in our lives. Don't let a moment go by that you're not worshiping him and you're not praying. Spend up, take everything to him. Take everything. Everything that concerns you concerns him. And so take everything in your heart to him. Love him and worship him and praise him. Let your, your life be saturated in a, in a spirit of worship and praise. Turn every circumstance and every situation into praise. And then saturate yourself in the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Meditate on the, on the Word of God. And let God speak to you. The writer of Hebrews also goes on in chapter 4. And he says this, Therefore, since we have such a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we possess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just like we have. And yet he did not sin. Therefore, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. In the Passion Translation, the writer translates Psalm chapter 5, verse 3 with this. I want to just end with this, and then I want to pray for you. He says, At each and every sunrise, you will hear my voice as I prepare my sacrifice of praise to you. Each morning, I lay out the pieces of my life upon the altar and wait for your fire to fall upon my heart. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, you are such a faithful God. You are a good God. You're a God that can be trusted. You're a God that can be believed in. You are the all-powerful. You are the almighty. You are the wonderful one. And so, Lord, that this morning I pray for the friends that have tuned in to this broadcast today. I ask in the mighty name of Messiah Jesus, who is the anointed one, that you would release grace into every home right now, where every place where someone is watching on their phone or, or on their laptop or on their, their iPad. I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be a sense of, of presence that will come, that the anointed one will come into that room right now, wherever they are. Lord, I pray that you would bring confidence and you would bring peace, that you would bring that help that comes in the time of need. 
Lord, I pray for those that are, are dealing with sickness. Maybe some that are listening today that, that have been attacked by that coronavirus. I pray in Jesus' name that healing would flow. Lord, right through this internet, that the powerful name of Messiah Jesus will flow and that healing virtue would come. Lord, I come against every fear that the enemy would, would try to bring. Lord, I, I believe that this the enemy of our souls has brought this great sickness upon the world to bring fear, to turn people away from our, their hope in God. But you are the God of hope. You are the God of peace. You are the God of comfort. And I pray in Jesus' name that the mighty anointing of heaven would begin to flow into homes, into living rooms, and kitchens, and bedrooms, even right now. Lord, that you would make your presence known, bring healing and life. Lord, I pray, touch that one. Lord, if, if there's someone watching right now that hasn't even made their peace with you, Lord, maybe they've just tuned in and tried to figure out what's going on, I pray in the name of Jesus that even now as they listen, they'll turn their hearts to you. They'll say, God, have mercy on me and forgive me of my sin and come into my life. You're the God who said, if you ask me to forgive you of your sins, I'll forgive you from every sin. I will come into your life. I will make my home in you. Lord, I pray that you would be welcomed in every life, in every heart today. Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanksgiving because you're a God that can be trusted. And we put our hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen.